Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. I'm so excited to do this show because it was something I never expected to see. Every second Saturday of each month in Baltimore, Maryland, Club 1111 opens its doors as an adults-only club for people with disabilities. Today, I have the mastermind behind Club 1111, David Greenberg, and his coworker and a frequenter of Club 1111, Bong Del Rosario. Thanks, gentlemen, for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So, um, David, I wanted to start with you. How did the idea of Club 1111 come about? About uh, five years ago, uh, our uh, person in charge of development at the time uh, was trying to determine what the needs were out there and how we could match needs with funding. Uh, and he came up with this idea to start a nightclub because there's such a social engagement need uh, among the families of people with disabilities, the people with disabilities themselves. Uh, and, every, and he came up with the idea of having a nightclub for people with disabilities. Uh, we all participated in a lot of kind of internal focus groups on what would be needed. How, how would we handle the dance floors and the, the, and the concepts of a game room came about, the concept of this mocktail lounge that, that we do because we, we, it was agreed that we weren't going to have alcohol because of the complications with many people on different medications. Um, and, uh, and security was a big, big deal. And we just planned all the different phases of it and the artwork and making it bit very uh, kind of culturally relevant to a, a nightclub experience in Baltimore, um, but catered towards people with disabilities. So all of that uh, and, and got it kicked off. But, but the guy's name, uh, and I, I think he's still around. I've lost touch with him, but he's still around named Tom Schneedwin. Uh, I give him full credit with this coming up with a need that was out there that most of us inherently kind of knew about but never really made it happen and he made it happen and it, had it not been as successful as it is we would have just stopped it as soon as you know money stopped um uh, but we came up with other ways to fund it i understand that there's a cover charge uh ten dollars a month but uh, yeah yeah ten dollars to, to come in no charge for the caregivers um and that's how we funded it. Originally, it wasn't going to cost anything because it was going to be funded by the, the corporate donations. Uh, but we decided when, when uh, all these individuals started coming and, you know, while we get five to seven hundred people, uh, you know, a, a good chunk of them are caregivers. So about three hundred and fifty or so paying uh, ten bucks a month uh, gives us enough money to pay for uh, four to five security guards and uh, uh, the overtime that we have for housekeeping. Uh, but all the other positions here are people who just take a day off during the week and then, and then come and, and work club. So, uh, Bong, can you walk me through, if I were to walk into the Club 1111, mm -hmm. what would I see and what would be available to me? As soon as you come through um, the I guess the mobility side of, of Club 1111, um, and after you go through the uh, registration, um, you walk right into music, um, and then you walk into a mocktail lounge area, um, and then a game room area. Um, so it, it, it's pretty much full um, by the time people start coming in. Um, and uh, we have two different DJ, um, rooms. Um, one area plays more new school um, music. The other one plays a mixture of new school and old school. Um, so the way it's spaced out is, is, is really good because you can really hear the music and you can distinguish which room you really want to go into. The club room or, or the game area um, is really nice. We have uh, cornhole, we have uh, basketball set up. Um, we have, um, which is something new, which is slowly but surely coming off. Um, we actually, I've set up a couple of tables um, for people who want to play chess 
you know, it's just a, a, a great area for people to sit down who, who aren't really, you know, dance dancers or, you know, really like music. It, it's a great place for them to sit down and talk and, and catch up with the people, you know, that they, they interact with um, on a monthly basis here at the club. Due to popular demand, because in the game room, that's where people go when they want to catch the Orioles game or maybe there's there's uh, uh, the uh, NFL playoffs, you know, because we remember we're on a Saturday night. There's many times we watched uh, the end of the Masters golf tournament. Um, there, there's there's key sports events that are wrapping up. Uh, even the Preakness uh, uh, um, uh, one year, night. not yeah. this past year. Um, uh, so it's nice having that, and uh, it adds to the the panache of what's going on. And and some people. You know, they don't want to come to club because, you know, they want to see the basketball playoffs. But you can see them at club with a lot of other people. Five to 700 people come in here. Probably 300 of them are coming on uh, uh, Maryland Transit Administration's mobility service. It's the access service. Uh, and they get dropped off. They're independent. And they come for a safe night out for the nightclub. And then they get picked up again. But when the mobility bus comes back and they ask for, you know, Steve Johnson, we don't know Steve Johnson. Most of these people are not people who come to the league regularly. So we use an iPad and we take a picture. When so Steve Johnson drop, is, is dropped off by mobility at, let's say, you know, 6 o'clock at the beginning of the club, we'll say, you know, what's your name? We'll say, Steve Johnson. Steve, I want to take your picture. Uh, uh, what time's your mobility pickup? And they'll say 9.42. So we'll put Steve Johnson, 9.42 pickup, and we have his picture. And then when the bus comes at eight, at 9.30 or 10 o'clock or whenever they do show up, uh, yeah. they're here to pick up Steve Johnson, and we walk through the dance floors looking for Steve Johnson because his ride's here. Well, and, and it's like VIP treatment. I mean, it's usually the yeah. VIPs, they're like, oh, excuse me, Steve, your ride is here. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but sometimes Steve, Steve, Steve is with Susie, and he doesn't want to leave Susie. Uh, to, <laughs> right. um, on your website, it also says spa. What does the spa area look like? Uh, you get your fingernails done. Um, we have volunteers that will paint your nails. Uh, we have uh, uh, temporary tattoos. Spa is a, is a bit quieter. There's, there's you know, softer music there. Same with the mocktail lounge. Mocktail, we try to have smooth jazz playing. So I think there's lots of um, ways for people to acclimate themselves to what works with their uh, their mood, their disability, uh, and what they like. You have staff, you have volunteers, you have caregivers or family members who come in for free. How free are the part people that come into the club able to... Um, do what they want to do are do the volunteers or their family members or their caregivers often interrupt behavior that they don't feel like is appropriate not not often enough um, <laughs> <laughs> frequently uh, we're having to find the caregiver to say we think your uh, your loved one or the person you're providing services to uh, need some 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 assistance uh, we're usually discovering somebody's uh, inappropriate behaviors or aggressive behaviors uh, before before some of the caregivers. Other ones are right on top of it. How I originally met Bong, he was a volunteer at club. Uh, ultimately, you know, turned out into a, a employment, and we do hire a lot of people who were volunteers or who were club goers. The club we have, we need about a thirty volunteers every club. We have little. Uh, kind of snack shack, snack stations where we have two of them where you can get sodas and water and chips and that's about all, all the nourishments we provide. We have a merchandise table where you can get your Club 1111 shirt and all the swag. We got rings and shirts and coffee mugs and that kind of thing. But volunteers run that. Uh, we volunteers are at two different registration tables. We have one at either end of the building where, where you come in because we'll, it will, it'll bottleneck. Uh, but the beauty of this volunteer opportunity, it is so hard, I think, for a lot of people who, if there's agencies watching this um, and you're looking at doing this, it is a great opportunity for to show someone, to allow 
somebody to volunteer and to feel like they're doing something that they're and they're participating and it's meaningful volunteers is critical to making this uh, club a success and I know bong you're kind of the recruiter and coordinator and trainer of the volunteers how do you recruit them where do you find people to who want to volunteer for club 11 11 um, well so before I came on board um, uh, another co-worker of mine um, handled all of the Club 1111 um, volunteer needs. So they've, they've had already built um, relationships with different colleges um, and different organizations, um, you know, throughout Baltimore. Um, so th that was already in place. Um, and we do have a Club 1111 manager um, that, that goes out and, and continues to recruit. Um, for volunteers for Club 1111. Um, I do help out um, here and there when I can. So we actually, on our webpage, um, under uh, Get Involved, we actually have a section where you can sign up to be a volunteer um, for any one of our programs. We, we physically are uh, right in between Morgan State University and Loyola University. Uh, right on Cold Spring Lane. They're both on Cold Spring Lane. Uh, and we get volunteers from both of those places as well as a lot of Johns Hopkins uh, 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 pre-med and med students uh, coming coming here. So the, the being in a mecca of so many universities really, and in today's day and age, uh, I know when I went to college, I wasn't volunteering at some nonprofit, uh, but today's uh, uh, youngsters, young adults uh, who go to college, they all are looking for that community involvement. And so it, it is fantastic that, that we get that. And then Bond didn't tell you, but Bond puts his business cards out there. So these, these individuals uh, lots of times are looking for part-time work. And we have personal supports and after-school autism services, and we have lots of part-time jobs uh, for college, uh, ind college individuals. Continuing on the volunteer thread, have you heard any feedback from volunteers um, about their experience with Club 1111? So most of the volunteers um, come back multiple times um, because they have such a great time, um, especially the ones that, that come for the very first time. Um, at the end of it, they're like, wow, you know, this was really, really fun. It was a lot, a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. Um, so I definitely want to come back. Um, which is a great thing for us when they come to volunteer. Like I said, they, for the most part, um, they come back um, again and again and again. So, Bong, Bong, you forgot the real reason they come back is we serve our volunteers pizza. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so we 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 buy. That's what, kept, that's what kept me coming back. <laughs> yeah, I think, that's I, some good I, pizza. I, 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 <laughs> College kids and pizza go, go, go together very well. Yeah, yeah, right. So, um, okay, so my second part of the volunteer thread is are there certain uh, agreements they, that they have to agree to in terms of interaction? Um, I know as a disabled woman, there's some people out there who uh, may not have good intentions uh, with disabled people. Um, and they can be predatory. And so are, are there, what, uh, what do you do to help prevent that from happening? All of the new club um, volunteers that, that come in for the very first time, um, I do a short orientation and do a brief overview um, of what the volunteers can expect um, here at club, what type of disabilities um, would, would come through club. Um, we get all types of disabilities. Um, pretty much every aspect of uh, the disability community I try to cover um, and, and, and have them um, feel as comfortable um, as they can. All of the staff members and security here, uh, we all wear walkie-talkies, so that way we can communicate um, as quickly as, as we need to um, if anything does happen. Um, so I try to let the volunteers know um, and, and have them rest assured that, you know, whatever situation may, may come up or occur, that, that we'll be able to uh, help them through it. Pauline, we have not had uh, any um, inappropriate volunteers 
other than we've had some some volunteers who could have been more engaging, but they weren't doing inappropriate stuff. And uh, the part of Bong's uh, uh, orientation, and we've tweaked that over the over time, uh, talks about personal space and not that the wheelchair is part of the person, and you know you don't go leaning on somebody's wheelchair and all. all it, so it gets into a bit of that, uh, but we haven't had any kind of predatory um, issues. Uh, more of the issues that we've had is people's um, behavioral challenges. Club was probably not the right place for an individual, not volunteers, but but a, a club goer, and uh, they they had to be banned from club, and probably only less than a, a handful have ever been permanently banned from club, and they just couldn't handle the the, the intensity of it, uh, or the you know. Uh, I was telling you earlier, or, or or a woman a woman denying them, uh, they right. just could they could they, no no was not acceptable to them, and so uh, how do you handle that when you when you're rejected by a by a beautiful lady? It sounds like you guys have a lot of safety measures implemented to ensure that everyone is there to have a good time and that they're safe. A lot of my colleagues say they're they they like sending their clients here, uh, their loved ones here, because they know they can go here, have a good time, and they're going to be safe. Are able-bodied people allowed to come into the club? Yes, Absolutely. we have. Uh, I, I, was, uh, uh, I was amazed that the, the lady who lives across the street asked me, can I come to club too? I said, hey, anybody can come to club. I said, would you like to volunteer? Because a lot of the, the people who, who don't have disabilities come to volunteer um, and I mean they're at club but they're they're not really going as a, she just wanted to come and dance I said absolutely you pay your ten dollars like everybody else and, and she comes about every third club I see her there um, can I ask where the name club 1111 came from I wish I knew the person to give credit to but we originally were thinking about uh, league we're the league for people with disabilities so we're thinking of club league league club uh, a league nightclub. We couldn't come up with what it is, uh, and somebody came up with Club Eleven Eleven because we're Eleven Eleven East Cold Spring Lane. That's our address, and uh, it just stuck. And as soon as everybody heard it, they said, "That's it. That'll work." One of the questions I had was that mainstreaming is a big push. So, what do you say to people who? feel like Club 1111 is like a segregation or another separation for people with disabilities? Uh, it is, you know, predominantly people with disabilities here. Yes, there's people without disabilities, but most of them are the volunteers or the staff. Um, and I think you have to come and see it. It belongs to the people with disabilities. And if you don't have disabilities, you're not part of the club. Now, obviously, you can come in, but and I think when you see the smiles and the how much fun is going on, I don't think people would would let go of themselves and be themselves as much when there's people who are going to be looking at them funny. I don't know. It's just it's their place, and and I think there is a place for integration, and I think people should be able to go to any nightclub they want to go to. Uh, but it's nice to be able to have this venue for people with disabilities uh, and let them kind of get their rocks off. It doesn't matter what you look like, what you sound like, whether you're drooling, whether you're in a chair, uh, anything. And nobody's looking at you. Nobody's judged. There's no judgments. That's the beauty, I think, of of how it is. Before I started volunteering at club. Um, I had never been to club, um, and I forget exactly um, who told me about club. I think it was a uh, one of um, a, 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 it was a friend of mine who told me about club. So um, you know, I, I came to club, um, and um, I liked it. And you know, like David said, it, it's it's a place where a person with a disability um, can kind of feel free and and, and not feel like you know, somebody's looking at you um, because of the way you dance or because of the way that you walk or can't walk or the way that you, you know, move your hands um, or what have you. 
Um, I also think it's a good way because the club is open to everyone, um, not just people with disabilities. You know, obviously, mainly it's it's geared toward people with disabilities, but it's it's open to everyone. Um, so I think, as far as a, a integration piece, um, I think it's it's great because for for those people who are kind of shy um, or kind of uh, you know homebody um, or kind of uh, you know kind of scared to go out, um, you know, outside of the quote unquote, outside of their quote unquote norm. Um, I think it helps them adjust to, uh, you know, like society and, and, and helps them adjust to a, a crowd, um, whether they have a disability or not. Because, um, you know, here, whether you have a disability, uh, whether you're a um, caregiver um, without a disability, or whether you're a friend of a person with a disability, um, there's a mixed crowd here. Um, so I, I, I really think it helps with the integration as well. Um, so, and, 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 and that's great because once that happens, um, you know, obviously we don't want them to stop coming to this club, but once that happens, you know, they can venture out into other clubs, um, and feel a little bit more comfortable, um, with, with who they are, you know, prior to me volunteering here, um, and working here, um, I actually didn't even really know the disability community, um, although I've been disabled my whole life. Um, you know, so so volunteering here, um, being a part of Club 1111, um, being a part of the league, um, and then other various uh, disability groups that I'm involved with as well, um, has, has actually really changed my perspective um, on the disability community. I think Club 1111 is great. Um, and I think, like I said, I think it's a great uh, integration um, tool. To both David and Bong, what's your favorite part? Of Club 1111? So I would say my favorite part is just to see our club goers with a smile on their face and, and having such a great time. Because um, unfortunately for some of our club goers, this is the only time that, that, that they get to come out into the community and, and, and meet up with either their girlfriend or boyfriend or, you know, what have you, um, and just have a really good time and they can be themselves. And, and my favorite part, as I thought it through, um, is talking to the, the, the return club goers, because they all know me because I come to every club, and, um, uh, and they kind of making these personal relationships with all these new, these, these individuals who, I know all the individuals who come to the league every day, it's probably about 300 of them, uh, but but they're not all coming to club. So there's at club, let's say there's 500 people at, at a particular club, uh, maybe 70 of them are, you know, come to regular, that I would know. The others, now I do know because I see them every month coming here. It's good to see them again. Um, I love talking to them, uh, but I also like talking to the volunteers, talking to the, you know, mobility drivers, um, uh, the families who are dropping someone off or coming to pick up someone, uh, and they're especially the caregivers that are family members, because a lot of people have paid caregivers that are with them. Uh, but the family members are so appreciative that, again, it's a safe space they can go to. So as someone, you know, the, who runs the whole place, um, it gives me, I think it's the most fun, most satisfying program that we have and we run you know I think we're up to 12 programs uh, but this particular one uh, which you know clearly is not a money maker we try to break even on this uh, but uh, we have other programs that make lots of money but this program gives me the greatest satisfaction I do want to tell the story that that um, because I love talking to people there was a gentleman who uh, early on was getting off a bus when he came to our, our, uh, our, the rear entrance of, uh, of the club where most of the buses drop people off. And I said, uh, welcome, you know, I love greeting people. Welcome to Club 11. Uh, what's your name? And he says, it's John. I said, John, where are you coming from? And he says, Cumberland. Well, Cumberland, Maryland is about two and a quarter hours away from us. 
and I said, wow, Cumberland, that's really far. And I, uh, welcome to the club. And I start to move to meet the next person. And, and this guy, uh, who, John, who I, had, who I just greeted, says, yells out, and I'm here to meet a woman. And, <laughs> and, I, and I was so touched by that. Originally, really funny that he would say that. And I said, well, there's lots of women here. Come on in. It's the dance floor's up and to the right there. And, uh, but then I realized the importance of club and that it's all about making social connections because that's really why the majority of people are there. Maybe to meet a woman, to meet a guy, to make some friends, to meet their friends. Um, that, that's what club is all about. So I think talk, for me, talking to people and talking to the volunteers, uh, what, a, what a great opportunity and what a privilege it is uh, to be able to do that. And so second Saturday every month, I'm here. To see the other volunteers um, that come in um, from like Johns Hopkins, Morgan, Loyola, um, from all the different schools, um, they're, they're very young. So just to see, you know, th their, their want and their passion to, to want to be here and, and, and volunteer. Um, is great too. It's the pizza. Right. <laughs> it's gotta be the pizza. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, David, if there were other agencies around the country that would like to create their own club, would you be available to speak with them? Yes, that, that has already started. Um, partly with you, a uh, gentleman in Toronto has contacted me, somebody in Naples, Florida. I was on the phone today with somebody in uh, uh, a small town, I can't remember the name of it, just near Sacramento, California. Uh, so people are reaching out. Uh, I'm happy to do what we're doing, and, and I can walk them through uh, uh, everything that we did. Um, I think it's a relatively, it's a fairly big undertaking, but but the, we have a model here. Uh, anybody uh, can reach out. If you go to club1111.org, uh, there's a way to get more information and just you know, reach out there. But if we could replicate these all across the country, um, great. If you want to know what, what good is happening in Baltimore, it's happening at 1111 East Cold Spring Lane. Thank you, David and Bong, for joining us today. I think the model for Club 1111 is brilliant, and I hope other agencies see the benefit of this model and how it could benefit their communities and the people with disabilities that they serve. I feel like One Leg Up Productions and Club 1111 are kindred spirits in the sense that we both value freedom, fun, and fulfillment. What I heard today was that Club 1111 is a place where people can let go of any worries or judgments from others, to be free, to be themselves, to have fun in a safe environment. I'd like to hear from our viewers. Would you like to see something similar to Club 1111 in your area and why? Please comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and share. And if you'd like to see more content, from One Leg Up Productions, please support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you and be blessed.